This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. As always, I'm your excitable host, Scott Carson. Um, Barry, uh, kind of jacked up in a uh, good mood today. Things are rocking and rolling. I, I think it's rarely that I'm not in a good mood. Um, we uh, had a great time last night, today being Tuesday. For those that are watching here live on Facebook and those that are listening to the podcast, which this episode will come out a couple days after Tuesday, but... Monday night, we had a great webinar, uh, had a lot of great turnouts, over 400 people, RSVP, joined in to watch the webinar as of this morning, catch the replay. We uh, talked about kind of 2008 market trends or uh, what kind of, I can kind of foresee with the market. And if you missed that webinar, take an opportunity, go to weclosenotes.tv, weclosenotes.tv, not .com, but .tv. That'll take you to our Vimeo page where you can see our most recent episodes from the, you know, Note Night in America and also the replays of the videos here from the Note Closer show as well. But we talked about some great things last night about what's going on in the market, uh, trends, uh, some of the numbers to look at. Or is the note game kind of dying? Is it closing up? Are there not going to be any non-performing notes available? Uh, a lot of great information. The webinar was over an hour and 30, hour, 40 minutes long. So I'm not going to go through it here on uh, the show today with you, but definitely take the opportunity, go back and check it out because we had some great stuff. So now, some of the most important things to keep in, in mind. If you haven't already heard, everybody, uh, <laughs> we have obviously a lot of record sales going on this year. Numbers are going. Uh, they expect us to have over uh, – 5 million loans done this year with new originations, refinances, and also home equity loans. A record number of loan officers coming back into the business. Uh, almost 700, expecting to do 677,000 um, homes sales, um, new home sales this year, which is a, a lot. Um, but we're still sitting at about a four, just above 4% default rate <clears throat> on our mortgages. And one of the big things that I looked at, I went back and added up the last four years of, of mortgages created and loans done. It was over 11,000 loans. Well, if you're sitting at a 4% default rate still, 4.05 to be exact, that still leads to a lot of loans out there available for us as note investors to tackle. And so a couple of things that we talked about last night was, where are those opportunities? Um, yes, a lot of people like to talk about the HUD sales, and there was a, a ton of of loans sold through the HUD sales uh, through 2012 to 2016, even a, a chunk this year, the numbers still aren't out because as of tomorrow, uh, being the eighth, they have their next loan sale, HUD uh, does. But we talked about who bought those loans and the uh, possibility of being able to buy some of those direct from those sales. And that's that's a possibility for sure for a big chunk. We've, we've talked about who those buyers were and the breakdown of those things in the states and the record number of uh, modifications and, and the workouts, but also, if you still look back at the numbers based off of January's numbers of this year, there's still 20,000 mortgages out of that original, about 22% of the loans sold from HUD are still struggling with servicing. So it leads to an opportunity still to reach out to those sellers or those people that bought those and see if they can't sell you the loans that are still not performed. But anyway, I also talked about a couple other things, <clears throat> how I really do believe that in 2018, your goal as a note investor is to go bigger. It's to, instead of buying a one-off and, and dipping your toe in the water, literally diving straight in and buying in bulk or being part of a mastermind group or being part of a like a buying club that's kind of coming together, raising capital together and buying together and, and, and you know, proverbially cutting up the, the pie for everybody to get a chunk of if they want to do that. I honestly believe that the one-off buyers, the small intro buyers are going to get outpriced out of the market relatively quickly because they're going to be buying from the low hanging fruit where everybody else is going. So those demand is going up and those assets are being overpriced. Okay. Now, one thing I think is the most important thing in for 2018, because you're in the 21st century, everybody, 
is you've got to have your systems in place. You've got to have your business in place. And that comes down to a couple of things. So I've been planning for a little while now to have our Note Nerd. I have to give Eric Hyde a little shout out for uh, coming up with that name, the Note Nerds Book Club, Book of the Month Club. And I do a lot of avid reading. I'm very fortunate enough to be a part of a couple different groups where there's some authors. Um, and I met our <clears throat> most recent, our, in our launch of our Note Nerd Book Club is how to set up your business for under a thousand bucks. It's by uh, two guys, by the name of, one by the name of Dan Fleshman and another one, Brandon Hampton. And one of the great things about is Dan is Dan is the youngest owner of a publicly traded company in history. Okay. Also a professional poker player, very laid back, cool guy. Um, he also does a lot, some stuff with the cannabis in, in California, things like that. But he wrote this book with his buddy, Bra um, Brandon Hampton. And Brandon is the largest independent social media publisher in the world on this stuff. But this is a, I mean, it's not a, a thick book. It's not something that you're going to get bored on. Literally, it's 95, 6, 9, actually it's 100 pages with all the stuff at the end of the sources. This is such a great book if you're getting started somewhere. And I know we got a lot of people that follow us here that are listening out there. Once again, the book is called How to Set Up Your Business for Under a Thousand Bucks. Okay? And it is a true verifiable fact. And I love the fact that that uh, uh, on the back of it, it says the quintessential book for those about to start their business. In today's world, the media glamorizes startups able to raise tons of money and seed funding from investors. While this has helped inspire more people to launch businesses, I believe it has also fueled the notion that tons of funding is needed in order to actually start. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that this is simply not true. And I totally agree with that. This flawed belief is the exact reason why Brandon Hampton and I, Dan Flashman, wrote this book. And so it's literally great. It talks about, I mean, literally the chapters are pretty easy to, to go through. You have a checklist, uh, setting up shop, business plan, executive summaries, a short business plan, SWOT analysis, which we spent a lot of time going through, getting your first customers, final thoughts, and resources guides for useful websites and apps. Literally a great thing. It even gives you how to read this book, okay? It literally uh, structures a book where we walk you through building and growing your business from start to finish at the end. We provide a list of resources to help you with the execution. So literally it's 95 pages, very easy to read. You could literally knock this out on, in a two hour afternoon or on a plane ride. And uh, just so I got a chance to meet Dan at a uh, event in, San, in LA in May called Secret Knock that I'm a part of. And then my buddy Greg Reed runs. So yeah, there you go. Scott, keep going. But anyway, we're working uh, to have Dan on hopefully as an interview um, later on, but highly recommend this. This is something good. Go out there. If you buy it online, I think it's nineteen ninety five. And what's really cool about what Dan does with his book is every penny of it goes towards his, his charity. Now, what Dan does does a lot with the homeless. Uh, what he does is he puts together these amazing, high quality black uh, or backpacks. Uh, most of them are black, but anyway, but black backpacks, and he stuffs them full of over a hundred dollars worth of goodies you know from emergency to socks to first aid kits and they just give them away to the homeless and he puts them together you can grab see somebody grab one take and give it to him basically kind of like a lifeline so that's good to know that every penny of your 1995 will go to that so go out buy the book on amazon and and you're making a little charitable donation here as we get into the holiday season but literally this is a great starting point for you guys if you don't have your systems in place to literally know what the hell you're doing You've heard me talk about having a plan of action. Business Systems was one of our first, actually, podcast episodes a while back. And you got to kind of know which way you're going. Well, that's why I thought this was very easy to do. You don't have to have a business degree to start up a business. Literally 20 bucks and roughly about 1000 bucks, you can get things rock and roll. And I know everybody can put that together. And, you know, depending on the state, those costs will vary a little bit. But it thinks it looks like Nicole's already posted there. Go ahead and get it set up there. Phenomenal uh, thing there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um let's see here yeah uh george's expensive book exactly look this is just a great way to kind of get your your everything organized and get moving in the right direction get everything's kind of set up and then get moving too many people dive in and they're like you know wild western guys you know shooting you know wildly you know like cowboys gunslingers this gives you a little bit more of a plan of action to, to take and, and get rock and rolling because 
look, if you're going to be doing bigger things in 2018, you've got to have some systems in place. And, and I know, Robert, you posted on here, Avi and I were a little confused as you spoke on HUD loans, but one of the sli slides said to look elsewhere. Yeah, I talked about it because one of the things that we, th we hear about the sales of this year and the last few years is a lot of people look at those HUD loans, all right? And I'm not saying go after and try to bid on the HUD loans directly from HUD. I'd say reach out to the, the, the buyers of those HUD loans because most of them have had them for a year and see if they can move any of those off their books now, okay? On a one-off basis or a smaller tranche basis or go to the other banks directly. That's what I said, Robert. So not going to trying to buy the HUD loans that can beat against them to buy the 1,000 or 2,000, but literally going to the sellers I'm sorry, going to the buyers of the loans after a year because now they're moving to foreclosures and moving to other things as opportunities for you, okay? All right, good job, Katie. Katie Mona just bought hers. I think Katie will get a lot of big kick, uh, good stuff out. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is if you gotta have your system set up, that's where kind of the big um, difference is gonna be because if you are reaching out to banks on a regular basis, you are reaching out to special assets and secondary marketing managers. The difference that I see comes down to kind of two things. One is continuation of following up, being diligent in any of those five to, you know, five to eight uh, phone calls or contacts, okay? The second thing I see is people actually having a professional presence, okay? They're not turning five minute conversations into 15 minute conversations with asset They're being direct, they're having a professional appearance, whether it's through a website, um, or just having their marketing in place that literally allows them to follow up, whether it's a CRM of email them out to them via you know, either Infusionsoft or MailChimp or one of those two, something that they're just continuously to hit the asset managers. I think this is a proof we had, we had Joe uh, Bainarina and Jimmy Kubiak on a couple weeks ago about them being successful in taking out that portfolio from the San Antonio bank is just the fact that they followed up five to eight times until they're ready to move. And that's, I think, the biggest key going forward. Um, especially in this new year is the, the continuation follow, follow up, follow up, follow up. And you got to be able to give something so that the people you talk to can do their own due diligence on you and follow up with you, whether it's a going back to your LinkedIn profile or going back to a website that features you in some sort of fashion. Now, one of the things that we have been working on since note camp here, um, you know, note camp was, uh, wow. It's a, just under a month ago. Is that right? Wow. We had a month now. Not quite a month, month next week anyway, um, is that a lot of people talked about how they didn't have a website. They didn't have, um, they were looking for a website, didn't know how to create it. So one of the things I've had my staff literally do, uh, Nicole and, and Greg Garcia have done, all, uh, Greg's done a big uh, bulk of it, of going into it, um, Nicole's system with it, is literally putting together a, a, a kind of a simple but effective website for guys kind of a cookie cutter website where we can swap out uh, logos, swap out names, but it features some great stuff for you where it's got a, a website, got an opt-in or people can opt into your contact list, stories, default, um, what am I looking for, case studies and things like that. You can swap out the case studies. It's linked into your social media accounts. Um, pretty jacked up about that. So if you'd like to find more information out about that website and kind of having that cookie cutter, just drop me an email at uh, scott at weclosenotes.com or, or if you're listening to me live, get a, a message on here and I'll be glad to have Greg or, or uh, Nicole get on the phone with you and talk you through what we're offering up here. Uh, trust me, it's not a $3,000 or $5,000 cost to put it together. It is going to be some time um, on our part to help you kind of customize it. So there's a cost associated with it right at 1000 bucks, but pretty relatively cheap for us. I'll put together a pretty decent website for you that opts in, it links into your MailChimp account, it links into, like I said, your social media accounts and, and stuff like that so people can follow you, can contact you, and literally help you kind of grow your database professionally. But that's one of the biggest things I see is that people follow up. When we market to them on a regular basis, one of the, the largest clicked on things is going back to our website. Let me see more about your website. Let me see more about your website. I mean, we add probably 20 to 40 uh, new people to our database a week just off of website opt-ins, um, which is really good because we can track it. And then Nicole sends me a report relatively about once every week we're two we pull just to see, hey, who's opted in, things like that. <clears throat> <laughs> a 
Jeff, you are correct. I've had terrible, Jeff says, I've had terrible problems dealing with website designers, awful group of people. Yeah, I would agree to that. And that's why we, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, the stuff that we're working on is not gonna have all the bells and whistles, but it will have some whistles. Um, it will be enough for you to get rock and roll. And it's probably the best startup website for you. We see, because we tried to make it very simple, but also colorful. If you don't have a logo, we'll help you get a logo. Um, we're gonna put some things together. We literally wanna make it very easy cookie cutter so we can create it in very simple plug and play for everybody out there. Um, look, I, when I first started We Close Notes, I used a very simple GoDaddy website and it looked like shit, all right? Did not look uh, good. And then I paid a lot of money for my website to go through a transition and had a very good person, uh, my buddy Travis Houston, who does some major launches, uh, major, major big launches out there for people. Um, revamp my website, revamp some other things. Uh, I, I spent about 20 grand on my website originally, and he did a great job with it. And then after a year, he trained out of it because he wasn't doing websites anymore, and we re revamped it. Chase Thompson did a little bit of work to it, but Nicole does most of the work to it now to get it up where it's at. And it, it runs really well. It does what it needs to do. It's out there for people to find more information. They opt in, they get on our list. That's what we use it for. And it, it, it's effective. And so, like I said, we put together some cool things for you guys. We'll take a look at it. Um, we'll make sure and upload. And if you're interested, drop me an email like Nicole's posted in the post. Or if you're listening on the podcast, you can go to scott at com. as my email. scott at com. We'd be glad to... Uh, or direct link in on the phone and talk with you about it. But <clears throat> biggest things you gotta guys have to keep in mind is you've got to treat this like a business. Those people that are treating like a hobby are gonna get priced out relatively quickly in 2018 and going forward. It just is what it is. We already see that happening. You know, some people already complained, oh, the guy's overpriced stuff. Yeah, it's overpriced because you're buying one note and you're trying to buy a, a winner. It's gonna be expensive. The more you can buy of the good, but also taking the, the ugly or the so-so with the good, the lower your average, your dollar cost averages per your asset. You also got some write-offs there. You're probably going to lose some money on. That's okay, but it, because it makes it more profitable on the big, big side. And you're going to need some of those write-offs and things like that. But it also you add a service to the sellers of these notes that are getting stuck with this low level, low hanging fruit. Okay. That's important to keep in mind is buying in bulk, buying in bigger tranches. I think you guys all heard us talking with the, uh, Adam Adams, he talked about how he's only looking at doing two to three pools a year now. Instead of doing 20, 30 notes, individual note deals, he's looking at doing one to two pools a year. It's very feasible. If you've got your systems, you've got your servicer, you've got your stuff in place to help you kind of streamline your business. Last thing you want to do is run all over like a chicken with your head cut off to make things happen. All right. What questions, comments do you guys have out there that are listening? Uh, let's see, like Robert said, thank you for the clarification. Anytime. Glad to be helpful. <clears throat> Sweet my coffee here. And we've got a very hectic and very busy schedule the next 60 days. I head out to uh, Ohio um, Thursday morning here for the Ohio Rhea. Pretty excited about that, speaking there, a couple hundred people, and then the next weekend, I am in San Diego for the Grow in uh, 2017 in the Laughlin. Uh, Laughlin is such a magnify your wealth uh, thing. Okay. Um, Robert asks a good question. Okay. Robert Burl says, roughly what figure for the pools? 100,000, 200,000? Um, what we see, Robert, for the most part, pools are usually, you know, I'm, I'm starting to say things that are 10 assets or more. Right. And depending on where it's located. Uh, um, it, it's going to vary on your values and stuff. Yeah, actually, honestly, the average pool size we see is about 200, 250,000. Now, the pool that Joe Bain Arena, Jimmy Kubiak closed was 31 assets and it was right at a million bucks. 30 assets paying roughly about 30 grand a piece. So that's what you see on that stuff. Um, yeah, a million or less, you see a lot of those pools that happen. You can carve out a lot of stuff. Like, you know, Wayne was working on a pool about a million bucks uh, earlier this year. We're getting ready to finish closing up on a pool of 30 assets. going to be right at, at $700,000, $650,000, everything like that, okay? 
Uh, let's see here. Marquita. Uh, hey, Marquita. Good to see you. Um, ask a question. Hey, Scott, I got a note buyer's website earlier this year from a, a company. Um, it looks nice, but after learning to work with it, I realized there are a lot of things that it doesn't have. No squeeze page, way to capture those that visit. Thanks, stress. Do you think you could assist? I feel like I do more than what than what's necessary. There's got to be an easier way. Marquita, unfortunately, I can't help you with anybody else's website. I'm not an ex expert pro. My staff's not an uh, expert editing pro. We've put something together that we can work with on stuff. So I'm unfortunately, I can't help you. Uh, I would, what I would do is I would go back to who you bought the website from and complain and say, hey, I need this added to it. I need this added to it. And I, I get, when you start off with a website, this is why we, we, we took some time to focus on this, everybody, is one of the things that when we asked on NoteCamp is with our NoteCamp investor survey, hey, do you have a website? Yes or no? Are you looking for one? Yes or no? And you, was a big, big chunk of people did not have a, a website. Now, big of a chunk of them did, which is great. Um, that's not a problem at all. It's just that people that don't have a website, especially when they start off something, they don't know what to look for, especially when they've been around for a little while. And you have to, have to, have to have, excuse me, a place for people to opt in into your website. You gotta have some place to collect that information. It's gotta be one of the most relevant things to do, and that's one of the most things that we have very relevant when you go to weclosenotes.com. Immediately, three things pop up. Hey, are you looking for notes? Opt into our note funding league. Are you looking to get trained? Opt in up to our, uh, find out more information about our workshops. Are you looking for a mastermind? Okay, those are important things that we have right off the bat. You gotta have people, the last thing you want people to do is go to your website and you not know about it. Now, yeah, of course, people are gonna click on your website and leave, okay, which is okay. Um, what you have to realize, though, is that's going to happen, but you want them to, if they're giving them an opportunity to opt in, if you find something, if your website is valuable, click in. That's the one of the best ways to get people to literally connect with you and grow your database on a regular basis. And that's one thing that really the people that close more deals that raise more capital is they just have a bigger, bigger database than you guys. And you all can start somewhere. I, you know, you've heard me harp on about using LinkedIn to grow your database and some things on there, How about using meetup stock and meetup groups to grow your database, meetup.com, going to REI clubs to grow your database. So those are all great the things to do because everybody that you're connecting with falls into a couple categories. You have everybody's a buyer, everybody's a seller, everybody's a funding source, okay? And you got to keep that in mind. And that's one of the things about your website. It's great to have a website, but a website... Um, uh, but a website is only good if you're feeding people to it, okay? And that's either up uploading videos or blogs or things like that. Just throwing a website up is only good if you're feeding people to it. And, and one of the things that if you're reaching out to asset managers and things like that, yeah, you want to have your website in the bottom of your email signature. First of all, you need to have an email signature. I see so many people that don't have an email signature. It doesn't have anything to be fancy, your you know, first, last name, email address, phone number, name your business. You want to put a hyperlink to something. You can put your logo there. Something simple. Uh, that way people can connect with you. Oh, I want to connect to the website or connect with me on LinkedIn or connect with me on social media, whatever it is. It's just that most people don't do that. And that's why we really have focused on um, trying to, okay, let's create something that makes it simple for people to contact opt-in, things like that to really get things rock and roll. Because a website can be great, but you don't want to have something that's so flashy with flash or something that's overly crazy that doesn't do the work. You don't want something that takes forever to load either. You want something that's simple. People just screw up a lot. The reason this is so important too is as we reach out and, and, and send out to asset managers or we do email blasts to asset managers, that's, like I said, they clicked on my LinkedIn profile to see who I am. If they don't already know me, if they already got bombarded with too many emails from me. And they also click on the website to see what's going on. And those are two things that you got to keep in mind really the start of where you need to be. But that's what I love about Dan's book. It goes through some great things. They're very simple things. It's not, you don't have to have a ton of money to be looking like a million bucks, especially in today's day and age with social media and things like that. You can literally really launch a business pretty ineffective, uh, uh, not ineffective, inexpensive, 
<laughs> out there. All right. Questions, comments, concerns for anybody out there, everybody? Yeah, I, I, I would go straight to the back to the website, Marquita, and talk to them about getting your edits made to the website. They should be able to offer you um, – Got a question here. It's kind of valuable. I thought it would be asked. Uh, Patty Ped, uh, who just sent me a text message to say, Scott, I have a quick question about clear title. o &E report shows two mortgages ahead of us. Seller insisting that title policy ensures that the two first two mortgages are invalid or released. Okay. There is no release record anywhere. I'm asking for a letter of identification from title insurance company. Seller saying no. What can I do? Uh, it's called basically don't don't close. Okay. Don't close if they're not going to provide that stuff to make you clear. Don't close on it. Okay. Um, they should be able to reach out and get a release of mortgage relatively easily done from the previous two. Um, that's one thing you may want to talk with Richmond Monroe to see about them having you helping out with it on that patty pad. So good question on stuff there for you. Uh, like I said, guys, if you go to WeCloseNotes.tv, you'll be able to catch a lot of the replays. We go through a tremendous amount of information last night on, like I said, commercial default rates. What I think a lot of people didn't were surprised about is the default rates across the board for credit cards, for uh, auto loans, for uh, what else do we have on there? Um, mortgages, auto credit cards, student loan, student loan default rates is at 11.5% which is kind of crazy. We figured out that the median home price is roughly, you know, you're going to need a $385,000 house is median home price across the country. And based on that, you need to be bringing in roughly about a 70 grand a year income. Well, you have all these people going to colleges to get degrees that aren't coming out making 70 grand a year. That's why they can't afford new houses. That's why they can't afford to pay their student loan payments because they're getting outpriced to the market. Does that lead to? Leads to them either moving in with a family or anymore, okay? But what's surprisingly too, based on some of the things we showed last night, is only about 2.2% of those loans that were closed on the HUD, the HUD loan sales were converted to rentals. Most of them were not, either foreclosed or modified of some sort, okay? Or chunk of them are still in uh, defaulted servicing work, okay? Well, guys, that's, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the, I think it's gonna kind of wrap it up for today. Kind of, a, like I said, go out, get how to set up your business, all right? How to set up your business for under a thousand bucks, Go to buythisbook.com, www.buythisbook.com. Takes you direct to the website so that you can max out uh, the donations for that. It's an easy book. Uh, like I said, I sent an email to Dan this morning, seeing what his schedule was like, to see if I have him on. Uh, but literally, you've got 66 pages of reading, and then the other 30, some on four, 33, four pages are all resources, websites, things to go to. Literally, a phenomenal book, one of the best books I've gotten from Secret Knock. Um, yeah, you know what, Jeff? You said it, you hit the nail right in the head. Jeffrey Wolf says debt is America's biggest growth industry. Yeah, it is. If you're in the paper game and know how to work it and how you can, yeah, defaulted paper, <laughs> okay? Defaulted debt is America's biggest game. Uh, it gives you an opportunity out there no matter what it is. But you got to get stuff set up and get things rock and roll and kind of get that foundation down. And this is one of the better books and we've got an opportunity for you. So like I said, drop me an email at Scott at We Close Notes. We'd like to find more information about the, uh, the websites, stuff that we're putting together for everybody and uh, go buy the book. We look to have uh, a review of it. Start. We'll talk a bit more about it come December 1st in the note closers. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Go out and make something happen. It is Tuesday. Go make it happen, and uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody.